Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 FPS series. In today's video we are going to be focusing on something that a lot of you guys have been asking for for quite a while now and that is that we are going to be fixing the camera for our weapon. So when we move left to right you can see our weapon moves with it, however when I go up and down you can, say that we you can see the weapon actually stays in the same place and it's not really all that great for aiming so we won't be able to shoot it at people if they're up or down below the player's level. It's a really easy fix but at the same time there's also lots for us to cover, lots of different variables and nodes to so try and keep it slow as I will do too and you should get hold of it no problem. So the first thing that you need to do then is you need to go ahead and open up your animation blueprint as it's going to be our animation blueprint or our character that we're going to be manipulating with a little bit of blueprint. So what we're essentially going to be doing is changing the spine position based on the control rotation. The control rotation is sort of where your mouse is aiming at and then we're just going to manipulate the spine around that. Now there is one other way that you could do it and that is using an aim offset um, but that requires different animations and it's just really the slow way to do things. If you're just working on a simple FPS just doing it all inside of the animation blueprint is definitely the easiest way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my main anim graph for my character and then inside of here we need to do a couple of things. So I'm going to drag this out to give myself a bit of room, that being between the final animation pose and our walk run state machine. And then from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in my blueprint graph and then from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in modify and then the one you're after is modify transform bone. What this is going to be doing is it's going to be allowing us to transform the bone of our character. The bones of the character that I'm actually interested in modifying is the spine. However, the player actually has three different spines. Spine, spine 1 and then spine 2 as well. And we can actually use this to give us a bit of a more smooth experience. So what we're going to be doing is modifying each one of those, all three of them, um, with the control rotation. It's going to make it look great. So go back over to your blueprint and then inside of here, because we're modifying three bones, go ahead and copy this and paste it twice. So now we have three of these in total, just like this. Now with these it allows us to uh, modify the translation, the rotation, the scale and also the alpha. Now we're only really going to be playing around with the rotation here as the rest is all done with animations. So what I'm going to do is click the first one of these and then in the details panel turn off translation as a pin, scale as a pin and then also your alpha as a pin and do the same thing for each and every single one of these that you've got. So just go through these one by one and make sure you do it leaving only rotation on there. Cool, so with these selected now, what we're going to do is go over to our rotation mode and we need to set this to add to existing because uh, if you just leave it ignore it's not going to do anything so just add to existing so that's going to take the existing animation um, pose in, into consideration and then rotate that um, and then just do the same thing for each one of those so add to existing, add to existing and then leave the rotation space at component you don't need to play around with it any other than that. So. The next bit that we need to do is we actually need to define the bone that it's going to manipulate and that's right at the top of the details panel. So the first one I'm going to set to spine, the second one I'm going to set to spine 1, and then the third one you can see I'm going to set this to spine 2 and then you should see the names go in here just make sure these are in the right order so you've got spine 1, spine 2 and that's all good. Once that we've done this what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hook up my component pose to this and I'm going to hook all three of these up together. So what I'm going to do is spread this out a little bit more just to make it nice and clear and then just hook up your little men together just like this. Just drag it along and try and keep your blueprint looking as clean as possible. And then just hook up your result over here as well and that looks all good to me. Now, nothing's actually going to happen until we hook up a variable into our rotation. Now, this rotation we need to create, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag out the first one of these and we're going to promote it to a variable. So that way, I know this is 100% hooked up. And then in the bottom left, for the name, just go ahead and set the name to aim rotation without any spaces. And then from there, drag it up a little bit and just hook it up to each and every single one of these nodes that you've got here and that's all good. And then if I compile now and then press play in the game, 
hopefully there shouldn't be any errors. And you can also see it's not doing anything yet. And the reason why it's not doing anything is because that variable isn't hooked up to anything. There's no value to it. So it's just taking the existing values and leaving, at, leaving it at exactly that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my event graph and then inside of here we've got to go ahead and set this variable. So what I'm going to do is using my sequence node from my update animation I'm going to add one more pin and then with this I'm going to drag all the way up to the top here and I'm going to create another line for the aim rotation. And with this I'm simply going to cast to the third person character just like we did below with the object wildcard being try get pawn owner and then if we drag this out what we've got to do now then is get the control rotation so drag out as third person character and type in get control rotation and then with this we can now break this down and turn it into our aim rotation so what I'm going to do is drag this out and type in break rotator and then from this, it's going to break it down into our X, our Y, and our Z. And we can manipulate these values to work with our control rotation. So what I'm going to do is right at the top, I'm going to go over and I'm going to do float minus float. And then for the middle one, I'm going to do another thing. And that is going to be float divided by, sorry, float multiplied by. And then the last one that I'm going to do is going to be float and then I'm looking for greater than and I'm going to explain these in a second but most importantly make sure you haven't got one coming out of x they all need to be coming out of the y it's the pitch that I'm after because we've already got the you know the other axes working already so what I'm going to do simply drag this up over here and I'm going to put some values into this so the first value is going to be 360 degrees the second one is going to be minus one and then the last one is simply going to be 180 and now what we're going to do with this is drag out this little conditioning node the return value here for the boolean and type it in and type in select float and then we're just going to hook up our a and our b into this and this is basically what this is basically going to do now then is it's essentially going to return a or b depending on you know the pitch that we've got here so if it's greater than 180, it's going to go to 360, so minus 360. And then if it isn't, it's simply going to multiply it by minus 1. And this is just changing a few things for us to make it nice and easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my return value. And then with this, what I'm going to do is simply do float divided by, float divided by, and then I'm going to divide this by 3. Now the reason why I'm dividing this by 3 is simply because we've got the 3 modifications, the 3 bones that we're translating. So it just makes it a little bit more smoother and it's going to make it equal for each individual one of these. And then from here, the last thing that we're going to do is simply type in make rotator. And with these new values now, what this is going to do is allow us to chuck this straight into our aim rotation. So if we get our aim rotation at the bottom left, create a set node and then hook it up to this so get the return value and hook it up into there that is all good so the last step that we need to do is we actually need to hook up our cast to character all the way over to set aim rotation and what this is going to do now then is pretty much get that control rotation and manipulate it with our weapon our arms and all that good stuff so now when I look up and down, you can see that our weapon is actually moving with it. And now we sort of have a little bit of a sense of aim with our character, which is exactly what I've been looking to do. However, I'm still not 100% happy with the position of my weapon. So I'm going to adjust my character a little bit. I personally think it's a bit too far zoomed in. So I'm going to close all of this because we've got all the animation blueprint stuff done now. And I'm going to go into my main blueprint for the third person character and what I'm going to do because it's too zoomed in is I'm going to go into my viewport I'm going to grab my camera and I'm simply going to move it back just a little bit just like that and then if I press play now give it a second to load up you can see we've got a slightly better view of our camera uh, of our weapon but I think it's a bit too far back now because I think you can see that it's actually gone a little bit inside of the head which we don't want so what I'm going to do is get rid of that going to go back into here and then I'm going to move it forwards just a tiny bit and then this way you can see now 
that it's actually not inside of the head. So just keep it just outside and I'm going to move it down a little bit as well. So if I press play now, let's go ahead and take a look at how it looks. And you can see we've now got a much better view of our weapon and it looks quite good. Test it, look up, down, left, right, and you can see that's all good. And we've got our AK-47. Um, you still can't really see it too much when you're sprinting, um, but it's really nothing to worry about. It works when we're crouching and all of that good stuff. But anyway, guys, that is our camera and our aiming all set up. That's all working. It looks great. And one other thing that you guys have been asking me for is just a quick little firing sound. It's really simple to do. So what I'm going to do is go over to my blueprints and I'm going to open up my projectile. And all I'm going to do is quickly put in a sound cue inside of here. So just type in sound cue or sound or the other way to do it is to go into my start starter content and just type in explosion and this is just like the basic sound that we're going to use for now so yep yeah, that's all good so what I'm going to do is going to add a component and it's audio explosion one that's all good I'm not going to worry about naming it I'm just going to leave it there press play and now every time we fire you can hear that sound and it's all good and we've got sort of a weapon going now I think it's a bit too loud so I'm gonna set my volume multiplier down to 0 0.3 press play and there we are we still haven't got a weapon animation just yet but it's nothing to worry about we'll be doing that real soon but for now you can see we've got our aiming up we've got our AK-47 looking in looking a lot better once again guys thanks for watching stay awesome keep creating your boy Virtus signing out this series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.